moment is here, you can stop your search, it's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, here's a good viewer question that I think actually opens up the door to a bigger topic, maybe even the questioner originally understood. It says, hey Perch, I remember back in November of 2015, Archie Comics released a new solo series simply titled Archie that was given quite a bit of publicity given it had big names like Mark Wade writing it and Fiona Staples drawing it. I remember a lot of the comic stores in my area selling out the first issue very quickly. I wasn't able to get one until I visited another province. And shortly afterwards, they released a Jughead solo series written by Chip Zdarsky that I found pretty funny as well. But the Archie series by Wade ended just sort of two years into publication, and the Jughead series barely lasted a year and a half, which I found disappointing because the stories all looked very promising. They were funny, and yet they didn't last. And it just makes me wonder, how the hell is Archie Comics even still around? It's not like any of their comics are making it to the top 50, and I'd be shocked if they cracked the top 100 or 100 best-selling comics. So how are they still afloat? Are the sales of Digest magazines in supermarkets and drugstores keeping them afloat, or is it something else? Well, that's a great question, and, and Archie Comics is afloat because of a few things. Licensing being one of them, the Riverdale, Riverdale, Rivendale? I, I don't watch that show, and I, I now my brain, you ever have this thing, and no, it's not age, but just this thing where you, you suddenly start to mistrust basic bits of information that you have? Maybe it is age. Anyway, um, that show... Uh, help bring in some money to the comic and or to the company, and yeah, the the grocery store, the newsstands, the digests, and the international shipping of Archie actually does quite a bit. In fact, probably, and and this is the weird, goofy part of it. Although it does answer a lot of questions, the uh, the series, the highly promoted, high profile Mark Wade, Fiona Staples uh, series, or the Zdarsky series. I mean, those came into existence largely because of that TV show, because of the fact that they wanted to do this cross promotion because they knew that this, this material was coming out. It was, you know, it was, it was part of a push by the company to do more. And what they quickly found out was it didn't really do much to move the needle of their core business, their core business being in the comic world, the digests and kind of this broader distribution of the company. That's what seemed to work. Uh, the, the crazy part about it is, uh, you know, it, 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 well, it reveals a couple things. If you have distribution working better, then your sales are going to do good. You're, you're going to have some ironclad protection against, you know, the ups and downs of the comic industry. Um, by the way, somebody uh, wrote me a very nasty letter, uh, one that wasn't really a question, more of just, a, you know, an angry rant uh, from a retailer. Um, who kind of laid into me by uh, pushing things like Amazon Digital and the newsstand and asking me if I wanted to kill the direct market, if I want to kill comic shops. And this is a pretty common refrain. This is something that I've heard many times and other people have heard. Every time the big two, or frankly any comic company, have tried to do something outside of the direct market, there's a handful of comic shops, not all of them, but a handful of retailers who immediately turn to this is an Armageddon. What was it that the Mile High guy said over uh, DC's moves to move from Diamond? It was, uh, it was, a, what was the word? It was, it's this over the top. It was like fascism. I mean, they, they, he'd start throwing around words like that. This is uh, an execution of the direct market. It's very, very aggressive. And, and yet, when you look at things like Archie, you look at things that are succeeding, you look at stuff that actually is working out in the market, uh, almost every single time, They've got a mass market play. There are comic shops that are starting to make a decent amount of money off manga. Comic shops, in many cases, were some of the last to the table with manga. Why is that? Well, because manga kind of prioritized uh, you know, the newsstand. They prioritized getting stuff into Target and Walmart. They, pr they prioritized that bigger market, and they were smart to do it. Comic shops were a little reluctant to go along initially, and now that they have, I, I think they were reluctant in many cases because they lived through kind of the manga bubble burst uh, about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but now that comic shops are embracing it to some extent, it is providing another source of income. It's not a, uh, you know, it's not something that can completely keep a comic store afloat, 
But if you combine that with some back issue sales and some gaming and some new comics and all the rest, suddenly you've taken your, your incoming revenue and you've dispersed it a bun- around a bunch of things. Manga provided another pillar to do that. But, you know, if you look at Archie, Archie has been successful at getting into places that are not the direct market. In fact, the direct market, it's not a good place for Archie. It's not typically where those comics are sold. I mean, most comic stores will tell you that uh, outside of that Mark Wade Fiona Staples book, which was an appeal to a direct market comic audience, uh, most comic shops keep a few issues of Archie on hand mainly for when adults bring their kids in and the kids are, for whatever reason, not interested in the Disney comics or you know Rick and Morty or whatever is going on that you know, might be aimed at a younger audience. It is weird, by the way, that Rick and Morty uh, in many comic shops is aimed at kids when, you know, the contents of that comic usually is, it's not kid-friendly, but, but whatever. Um, I'm, I know I'm all over the place. But in short, it's a, this very long-winded way of saying, yeah, the, the, the mass market, the newsstand, the grocery stores, the digest, it's cranking in a lot of money, as is the licensing for the product. That's how it stays afloat. And if anything, what Archie has learned is that the uh, the floppy comic, the, the Mark Wade comic that they did, really was probably the least interesting thing that they've put out from a, from a revenue perspective, from a financial perspective. It didn't move the needle for them. It wasn't particularly interesting. I think they will be unlikely to try that again anytime soon. I'm sure they will at some point. But I think it will be a while because it just it, it, it wasn't good for them. It, it didn't help. Uh, the core business of the Digest do well. In many cases, that's a low-cost business to step into because uh, printing costs are lower. In many cases, there's a lot of reprinting going on. Like uh, that, that business of selling there is pretty stable, pretty predictable. It's not going to make them the number one comic company ever, but it, it does the job. And Archie Comics has fooled around with doing their superhero universe. If you might remember, Rob Liefeld was sort sort of involved in that for like a minute, and then seemed to not be and Anyway, they they keep trying, and what's in Archie's mind, what it's in that company's mind is, hey, maybe we can get some superhero digests going as well and get those into the mass market. That's that's probably a smart way to think about it. It's at least an untapped market where they know there's more money. How much more money is is kind of a little bit of a mystery question, but they know there is some, and so they're going for it. Um, I, Archie comics are not for me. I, I think this is, uh, the, you know, I'm not the audience for that, either the original classic comics or the uh, you know, the floppy versions that, that Mark Wade and, and Fiona Staples did. I'm with you. I, I, remember, I remember picking up uh, the Zdarsky Jug Cake book and, and being like, well, you know, I, this still isn't a comic book I terribly love, but it's it's hitting the mark closer than the, than the digests are. And it's just, it's not my audience. But Archie also does a good job of knowing who buys their books, knowing who's going to come in and actually want to spend money for it. And, uh, and delivering on that. And I, that's a sounds like a very boring kind of point, but it's an important one. It, it's, it, it's, a, it's rare in comics that you have a company that seems to understand who their target audience is, who's got cash, and then just, you know, goes head first for it, appeals to it. I, I, I mean, as we've talked about in other videos, it feels like the other companies are constantly trying to second guess who their customers are or in search of kind of this mythical other group of customers that aren't the customers they have. And they just, they spend a lot of like angst going after that. And Archie by and large feels very, in a good way, very boring. They show up, they're like, yeah, we know who buys Archie and we're just going to keep cranking that out until we're dead. And that's what they do. And so the, the company survives. But anyway, costs are low. Licensing, you know, incoming is pretty good. International is uh, is nice for them. They make a decent amount of money. They have those channels. Um, the digests are working, and uh, you know the the least important part of their business is the part that uh, you know we wind up talking about on this channel most of the time. The the, the digital efforts and the uh, the floppy efforts are just not not particularly compelling for them, so they don't do it. Anyway, that's the answer. Um, I I don't know. I I mean, Archie to me is it. There's a lesson in there. For uh, for comic companies, then the lesson being, you know, first off, this uh, you know, the, turns out the newsstand is important. If you didn't realize that, or for some reason you were confused by it, uh, the newsstand is pretty critical. And on top of that, um, you know, it it it, it turns out that company kind of knows who buys their comics, and they 
they service it. Anyway, that that's the answer. So good question. Bigger world there. And uh, it's kind of weird to say, man, I, I think Marvel and DC could learn a lot from Archie when they're, they're kicking Archie's ass financially. But still, there are elements to their business that more people should probably try and figure out. Anyway, a good question. Curious. Who's reading Archie here? Come on. Let's uh, let's see what you got. Did you go in on the Mark Wade, Fiona Staples, or the Zdarsky book? Uh, were any of you into that? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, yeah, who's, who's buying Archie who listens to this channel? I'm betting not many, but we'll find out. Thanks for listening.